Okay, in this particular episode, there are really two things that I just want to cover. Hopefully, this is going to be a quick episode. We're going to talk about audience. We're going to talk about how many days to shoot. Target audience. Who is your target audience? Who are you going to pitch this movie to? Who is going to want to come in to a theater and watch your short film? Is it anybody that likes movies? Is it anybody who likes action in movies? If you've written that out, or you, even if you have that in your mind, you are really aiming at nothing. This is what you need to do. You need to go through this list that I've got here on the slide, and you need to answer all these questions. That's going to define who your target audience is. And then after you're done with that, you're going to look for a film festival that meets your genre, and also from the best knowledge you can gain from the information about that particular film festival, are they catering to your target audience? And that's how you pick out what film festivals you're going to be submitting to. Except, go back to the slide, look at that last bullet, geographical location. Um, that's kind of a biggie, and let me talk a little bit about that, because there's no question that a lot of people create a film with the intention that I want my friends and family to watch this thing. So I am going to submit a film to the local film festival, and that really is their only motivation. They don't care about any other film festival, and they don't care about any of the other criteria that I showed on the slide. They just want uh, something submitted to the local film festival, so... Uh, their friends and family can see, which I think is not a good idea. I, I think that really cuts you short. But anyway, here in Hawaii, uh, we are a land of minorities, and there's nothing wrong with saying that. That's just a fact. What happens in local film festivals a lot is that the uh, films cater to certain ethnic groups. Uh, this is most typical. Sometimes it can be general, but a lot of times it's uh, predominantly about an ethnic group. And whether it's a documentary or whether it's a narrative, there's this overriding theme of overcome. How this particular ethnic group from way past overcame all the obstacles, overcame all the prejudice, overcame uh, just a lot of barriers to become what they are today. These films get eaten up. They are just like gold to the f local film festivals. Why? Well, it's because they, it sells tickets. Because people love watching those kind of films. They'll come in, buy a ticket, they'll watch it because that film is really talking about them, their history, their culture. It's very flattering. That's why it sells. So if you have that intention that you want your film to go into a local film festival, structure a story about you know something in your locale, whether it's an ethnic group or whether it's an event or uh, some, some other thing that is local to that area that people can identify with, oh, I think you stand a very good chance of getting accepted into a local film festival. That's just the way life works. Okay, the other thing I want to talk about, how many days should you plan to shoot? Folks, I know I'm putting the cart before the horse here because there's a lot of reasons why I came up with the answer that I'm about to give to you. I will deal with that in the next episode. Right now, I don't want to keep you in suspense. Four days. Your short film should take four days to shoot. And the way that I would highly recommend that you do this is Saturday, Sunday, Monday through Friday, People have to go back to school, back to work. You don't shoot during that time. Everyone goes back to being normal. But the following Saturday and Sunday, you shoot again. By Sunday, you've got everything wrapped. I think that is uh, the best target for how you should lay out your shooting schedule. 
I'm going to give you some of the reasons how I came up with that in the next episode. But let me just say this. When you deal with volunteers and you're going to have a volunteer cast and a volunteer crew, these people are helping you out of their spare time. But they do not have an unlimited amount of spare time. What you're going to try to do is to get people excited, get people to sign on because all it's going to take is one kind of extended week to get this thing done, right? Saturday, Sunday, the next Saturday, Sunday, just kind of a real long week and then you're done. I think people will say, yeah, I can do that. I can give that amount of time. And I think that you will really be able to get the, the cast and crew that you need to just hang with you for that one extended week. When it goes beyond that, Sometimes circumstances, you know, change, you know, things come up. People can't make their commitments anymore. Uh, some people may begin to think that the director doesn't really know what they're doing and that uh, maybe they shouldn't be a part of this project. And I've seen that before. And so try to minimize the amount of inconvenience that you're putting on your volunteers. Saturday, Sunday, the next Saturday and Sunday. As I get into the details in the next episode, you're gonna see, I actually think you're only gonna be filming on three days. That fourth day, Sunday, is kind of an extra day for pickups and for uh, just overflows, you know, something went wrong and you couldn't finish it in three days. So you've got that fourth day as a buffer, as a safety valve, but I really think that should be enough. A lot of this, of course, depends on how you wrote your story and how you structured that, right? If you got 20 different locations that are written into your script, that is not going to work. And we're going to start talking about that in the next episode. And some of the other things that I think point to a four-day shoot schedule. So until then... When we talk about this some more, we'll see you. Aloha.